Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from uh, chapter number three, Fourier series representation of continuous time periodic signals. And here we'll be primarily discussing example 3.2. Now, just to recall, in chapter one, we introduced two basic periodic signals. One is called the sinusoidal signal represented by xt is equal to cosine omega t. And the other is periodic complex exponential signal xt, which is represented by e raised to the power j omega naught t. We will be primarily using this uh, equation. And where omega naught is the fundamental frequency, from there we can find the time period to be uh, 2 pi over omega naught. Okay, let me give some basic concept of the Fourier uh, theorem, Fourier series. Fourier says that any periodic signal can be constructed by suitable combination of signals of different harmonics. And what does that mean? So this is, let's say, this is our signal of a fundamental harmonics, let's say it's 50 hertz signal. And with this, if we add third harmonic, that is 150 hertz signal of different magnitude, and then if we add fifth harmonics, that is 250 hertz signal, the so same way if we keep on adding, we will be getting a cosine, uh, sorry, a periodic uh, square wave signal. This is not very uh, accurate, but here only we have added only three signals. So now this can be written if we call this xt, in this case we can then call that xt is a1, a magnitude a1 e raised to the power j1 omega naught t. So this is the fundamental. And then a3, e raised to the power j3 omega naught, the third harmonics. And similarly, a5, ej5 omega naught t, fifth harmonics. Now, this is for this particular signal where we are using uh, fundamental and third harmonics and the fifth harmonics. Now this can be generalized with the summation signal. So xt is sum of all these. Now this is ak, so a1, a3, a5 is written as ak. And remember, k could be even uh, 2, 4, etc., depending on which type of signal we uh, are going to reproduce. And then here also 1, 3, 5, we are writing j. So this is the form, which can also be written as another form, that is, instead of omega naught, we write 2 pi by t. So this form is called the Fourier series representation of periodic signal. Now let's come to the example. Example 3.2. Consider a periodic signal xt with the fundamental frequency 2 pi that is expressed as, so this is the signal, limit is from minus 3 to plus 3, a k e raised to the power j k 2 pi t, 2 pi is the fundamental frequency, the values are given for the uh, coefficients a0, a1, a minus 1, etc. We will use that. And the question says, write xt in the form of sinusoidal, so that is part a. And then show graphically how the signal xt is built up from its harmonic components. So let's see the first part. We have this information given. And to write it in form of a sinusoidal, we open this equation. This equation we opened. First of all, we put k is equal to minus 3, so we get this term. Then k equals minus 2, we get this term. And similarly, all the values of k from minus 3 to plus 3. So we get this equation. And now since the values of these coefficients are given, so we'll plug in those values. And so a dash uh, a minus 3 is 1 over 3 from here. So putting all the values, 
uh, this is our kind of a complete equation. Now what we'll do is we'll collect the same fundamental frequency terms which have same fundamental frequency. So like 6 pi and 6 pi, 4 pi and 4 pi, 2 pi and 2 pi. So collecting we get this form. And now we'll use a Euler formula to convert them into cosine. Now this is the Euler formula. So e j theta plus e minus j theta divided by 2 is cos theta. So if we get divide by 2, this we can write in the form of a cosine signal. Similarly, in all three cases. So dividing by 2, and obviously we have to balance. So it will 1 over 4 will become 1 over 2. Here this 2 is coming here. 1 over 3 we divide by 2, multiply by 2, so 3 over 2. And then we can now use the formula. So it is 1 plus half is the magnitude cosine pi t. Then this magnitude is 1 cosine 4 pi t. And this is 2 by 3 cosine 6 pi t. So this is our answer of the first part. The second part says show graphically how the signal xt is built up from its harmonic components. So let's see that. And this is the signal. First of all, we add the first two. So this is DC value 1. With that, we add a signal of magnitude, uh, uh, amplitude half. And its frequency is 2 pi. So from here to here, it is one cycle is 2 pi. And adding these two will just move this up because of the DC component. So this is the addition. And then with that, we'll add the second signal that is cos 4 pi t. Now remember, this is 2 pi and this is 4 pi. That means the frequency will be double of this one and that is shown here double and you can separately also have shown it but this is one cycle in that duration we'll have two cycle of the signal and you can try to manually add we'll, you have some idea so like this is 1.5 this point is one so we'll have 2.5 and similarly you can add this point and this point so you'll get a graph something like this so this graph uh, is given in the book. So this is what we follow. And now with that, we have to use the cos 6 pi t signal. And cos 6 pi t signal amplitude has 2 over 3, that is 0. 0.667. And so 0. 0.667, if we add with this, the only thing I could make is 2.5 and 0. 0.67 is 3 something, 3.1, 3.167. 3 and uh, similar signal, but this is very difficult to manually uh, plot. So we'll take help of uh, MATLAB, and I hope by now you have learned MATLAB. So MATLAB, uh, I'm using online version, and we'll just input these. This is the program that uh, I've written. So X is the angle actually and it is going from uh, 0 to 2 pi that is the time period and then fx xt we are writing fx and all this value 1 1 over 2 cosine x and cosine 2x and then finally we give command plot x fx so plot this and this so this is what we get this is x and this is fx and if we compare this with the output given in the book, and since we are taking only one cycle, so let's select one cycle from here. And you can see this is exact reproduction of what is given in the book. And even the magnitude 3.167 is 3. Point something 167. And similarly, the other magnitude. So this is negative sign. So from zero, this is going towards negative. So I hope you have been able to follow this. Please let me know through your comments. Thank you.